Okay, so uh, questions 27 and 28. So going through the uh, passage, um, where we see that it's about uh, capillaries, and of course the capillary is the level at which gas exchange occurs. Um, then it starts talking about hydrostatic pressure and how it changes across the capillary. So first of all, you know, the word hydrostatic pressure should right away, hydro means water. So you should think about water pressure. And uh, obviously when you have high water pressure, hydrostatic pressure on the arterial side, then because the pressure is high, it pushes water out of the capillary. Um, so it sort of filters through the walls of the capillary and, uh, and into the third space. So the third space is, uh, is called the uh, interstitial space. So you can imagine uh, the body is having uh, these three spaces. One is within your blood vessels, so that's the intravascular space. Then there's uh, fluid in your cells, that's the intracellular space. Then there's fluids outside of those spaces, which is the intercellular or extracellular space, also called the interstitial space or the third space. So, and, and you can imagine that the, the water going out through the walls of the capillary, it's sort of, um, it's, 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 it is filtered. And of course, you know, we talked about this when we talked about the nephron um, and the glomerulus and, um, and how the uh, blood is filtered and then reabsorbed. Um, well, it's, it's just like a sort of like an espresso or cappuccino machine, which has uh, water under pressure. And then um, there is a filter or sieve. So um, the, the cell wall sort of uh, works in a similar way. Okay, and then um, after the hydrostatic pressure and so on, and then as it goes through the capillary, it sort of goes down. And then uh, there is the reabsorption. And that happens because there's more protein in the blood. So then the water concentration is higher outside and lower inside the vessel. So water wants to diffuse from high concentration to low concentration to get inside the vessel. And, uh, and of course, when water is going across a semi-permeable membrane, um, this is uh, osmosis. Uh, you know, this is the definition of osmosis. And so, um, so we have a, a higher hydrostatic pressure at the beginning, uh, going through the filter, then lower hydrostatic pressure, and then osmosis or osmotic pressure uh, in increasing uh, so that you can reabsorb uh, the fluids into the venous side. So, you know, if having some background on this uh, makes it very simple because you hardly read any the passage or anything. You just look at the questions. And so uh, the question being, uh, if the hydrostatic pressure was very low, fluid in the system would show well, it says uh, no net movement, uh, but of course there's going to be net movement because of the osmotic pressure that I just explained. Then it says uh, net movement from the capillary into the interstitial fluid. Well, uh, going from the capillary into the interstitial fluid would be because of high hydrostatic pressure, and then it's being pushed out of the capillary. So B would be uh, incorrect. And then there's net movement from the interstitial fluid into the capillary. Now that makes sense because of the uh, osmotic pressure dominating. And of course, this is exactly what the graph is trying to show for those who don't have the background. The graph is showing that the hydrostatic pressure is going down from the arteriolar side to the venous side. And um, the result of that is that uh, looking at the arrows, you can see that the uh, because of the uh, pressure is high on the hydrostatic side, you get the fluid being pushed out and then fluid is returning uh, with the arrows on the right side towards the venous side because uh, frankly the osmotic pressure is staying quite stable but it's the hydrostatic pressure which is significantly changing from the arterial to the venous side and that's the the major interpretation um, of the diagram and then finally uh, the d was net movement from the capillaries venous end uh, into the interstitial fluid and from the interstitial well that's just a mess because uh, it's not going from the capillaries venous end it's going mostly from the capillary arteriolar end because of the high hydrostatic pressure so then uh, answer choice uh, c is correct then uh, moving to uh, uh, question 28 which of the following uh, best explains uh, why the osmotic pressure is reasonably constant uh, along the capillary so so just try to keep in mind that the gradient is uh, because of the hydrostatic pressure pushing out fluids, the gradient 
becomes that uh, water on the outside wants to be pulled back inside. Now inside we have, uh, you know, inside the cell, so this is on the in, that's on the out, and we have the water which is going to be in greater concentration uh, now outside and it's going to diffuse in uh, to where it is in uh, lower uh, concentration. And why? Because it was pushed out but it's semi-permeable membrane and so inside of here we have uh, proteins, <laughs> you know, and the proteins uh, remain essentially uh, um, uh, constant because it's not really crossing the, the membrane. But we also have solutes inside, right? So um, in order for the, hydro, uh, the osmotic pressure to remain constant, one would expect that it's not just the level of the protein concentration that has to remain constant, but the level of the solutes would have to remain more or less constant to keep this driving force um, to come back inside of the cells. So um, answer choices A and B both uh, talk about the permeability um, to protein inc uh, permeability changing but the idea that the permeability is changing um, does not goes against our assumptions that this is a, a semi permeable membrane uh, you know which you know then you can make calculations but it's not a membrane that is changing over time um, then uh, androtrose C says proteins initially are lost but um, we have no evidence of that. In fact, you know, the, the, the mini passage uh, suggests that it says, assume that the capillary wall is free, is freely permeable to water and virtually all solutes except plasma proteins. So, so this wall is freely permeable to water. It is permeable to, uh, to, to solutes, but it's not permeable to proteins. And so there is a driving force back. But the concentration inside, intravascular concentration of the basically the serum, um, is going to be dependent on the protein and the solute concentration. So then we're left with answer choice D. Fluid and solutes initially lost. So there would be solutes that would be initially lost because of the high hydrostatic pressure on the arterial end are largely uh, replaced along the capillary. So as long while it goes in the capillary somehow, either through uh, um, different transport systems or whatever, but the capillary replaces the solute to maintain a high enough concentration of, um, of solutes and protein inside the capillary to maintain a driving force the, uh, for water to come back inside of the uh, vessel. So their answer choice D uh, is quite logical. So knowing if you know the content uh, you can answer these questions uh, in under a minute each because uh, you're not really looking at the graph <laughs> you know you're not really uh, reading the thing you're just going uh, uh, to do the answers i admit you should at least scan uh, the um, the uh, reading material so that uh, so that there's no incredible exception that's coming up that you need to know about. So anyway, if if you uh, are looking to read up about uh, diffusion or uh, uh, osmosis, um, here are some uh, places. And seven point five point two is uh, for uh, capillaries, and seven point six is for the lymph system because the lymphatic system is the system that uh, is most concerned with our third space that third space uh, in the body